what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be my spoiler free review for pretty little liars original sin season one as spoiler free as i can help it only for the first five episodes because that's all i've seen thus far the series is going to debut this week on hbo max the embargo is lifted so i can talk about it so pretty little liars original sin is being brought to us by roberto sacasa who we know is known for riverdale and it's sabrina spinoff as well over on the cw the series revolves around this new series pretty little liars original sin revolves around five new liars a new generation of liars set in a nearby town away from rosewood it's a town named millwood and the series is following again five friends named imogen who is played by by Bailey Madison, Noah, who is played by Mia Rafiko, uh, Tabby, played by Chandler Kenny, Minnie, played by Malia Piles, and Farron, played by Zaria. Now, similar to the original show, I will say that the girls again find themselves targeted by an unknown assailant or individual named A, who is targeting them with threats and text messages because of something their mothers did over two decades ago regarding a girl named Angela Waters. Now, as a fan of the original show, I'm not going to say that the pilot for this series surpassed the epic pilot we had in 2010. It might just be nostalgia. However, based on the five episodes I've watched so far, I am hooked on this mystery, and I do find it to be very gripping. A is definitely more aggressive this time around since being on HBO Max allows them to push the envelope, and you are going to have, of course, some very graphic moments. I'm thinking of two kills in specific. One person gets their throat slit, and I think the other one is strangled. Uh, with a with a shower curtain uh, so again a is definitely more aggressive but i do miss the black hoodie i do miss that hopefully that's something that'll be introduced later on but really honestly i don't care uh, i do prefer the black hoodie look but the look of a in this series isn't really that big of a issue for me answers are also being given i would say with almost every new episode thus far that i've seen and i know og fans will appreciate that because you got tired of like me some of you i know got tired definitely of that 20 episode format where it was just nothing but filler and then many episodes where it's just nothing happening and then they save all the answers for their season finale or mid-season finale. like bro what are you doing and it's no nothing is getting breathing room either because it's just so so jam-packed but this show is actually giving you a piece of the puzzle each new episode i feel like the series is also riddled with slasher film references and certain scenes actually pay homage to to iconic moments from those slasher films the five girls are all very likable sarah shepherd's novels for those of you who read the novels know that the series like the original show is based off of her novels of pretty little liars Sarah shepherd's novels are more than recognized here as well mallory bechtel actually stars as a set of identical twin sisters named karen and kelly karen is the resident mean girl so she's our allison kelly is the more nice one which again is a clear reference to both courtney and allison which i can admit the og show handled the twin concept terribly we know that finally was introduced in season six and season seven i think it was handled horribly given the storyline pass we went down so before I get into some other positives, I do think the pacing and dialogue are the weakest aspect so far. A lot of scenes seem to not seem to not get room to breathe before cutting to the next one. A specific scene I'm thinking of, just to give an example, involves Imogen hiding from A, and it's completely squandered in the sense that when it could have been used to build a lot of tension, like the scene starts, it's getting your heart racing, and it's looking like it's gonna pick up some momentum and the tension is about to build, then it's cut short, it's like, bro, why? The dialogue also isn't completely awful, but I found it cringy on several occasions. Tabby, who is one of the liars, she's my favorite liar because she's a horror fanatic and she loves all these recent horror films and a lot of horror films from the, from the past. She makes a lot of cringy dialogue references to them also at times. It's not that it's cringy because she's doing it. It's the amount of times it happens. So Tabby, again, is unfortunately given dialogue that is convincing me someone desperately wants to portray this is how teens are and horror fans are and they themselves aren't a teen or even possibly a horror fan like they're trying very hard to convey to you teenagers are all like this or something <laughs> uh, and they themselves haven't been a teen for quite a while it just seems like desperation of trying to depict an average teenager it's filled with all these buzzwords the dialogue and she even has a moment where she confronts someone where she just completely spewed out this what i'll call buzzword vomit and it was just cringe aside from that each liar has a personal struggle they are dealing with as well imogen is pregnant noah has some legal issues tabby has some 
has some workplace issues. Farron faces racism, and Minnie seems like she's obsessed with the internet while also dealing with a recent loss. So you can already see the similarities between the OG show and this new slasher relaunch set within the same world. Performance-wise, I say everyone is doing a solid job. Bailey Madison is the one who actually is very is, is, is impressing me the most here with her performance is Imogen from the way she's delivering her lines and just all the things she was showcasing to me. A side of her I can admit I've never seen, and this is coming from someone who's watched her ever since she was a little girl. Mallory Bechtel is incredible as both Karen and Kelly. The switch between those two identical sisters is captured wonderfully thanks to the fact that she is effectively portraying that these are two different girls. All in all, exploring a darker side of PLL has me more than satisfied and I'm hooked on the series so far. And my only hope is that it lays off the buzzword vomit and improves the pacing. Honestly, there's even a chase scene where I'm like, is that all? It like the chase scene could have been longer. And I know a lot of you horror fans who watch my channel love a good chase scene. Original Sin, again, from the five episodes I've seen is a solid relaunch of this universe. And it has references to the OG show as well. So to get to get more specific there. A certain act in a car definitely seemed like a nod to the pilot episode in which we saw Byron and Meredith hooking up. So the school parties with pleasing visual aesthetics are there and these good costume designs, although I will say the OG did it best. So far, the show is an improvement in regards to its current handling of the mystery, the twin narrative, especially not dragging it out and introducing it later on in the show after teasing it for multiple seasons prior going in a darker direction and providing the right amount of romance drama and terror it just lacks in the dialogue department and again in the pacing um and maybe a bit some of the camera work and some of the sets maybe also i would say the og show is superior there too all in all though still most people again came for the mystery and original sin doesn't put its mystery in the background like the original show did to become a soap opera about girls and their relationships then saving all the answers for a series finale or a season finale I've thoroughly enjoyed what I've seen so far. I can't wait to see how the season ends. I hope we get season two and hopefully this doesn't go down the path that I know many people are expecting to go down for those of you who are familiar with how Riverdale has turned out and the crossover with Sabrina and all these other things. Hopefully it doesn't go down that path. Hopefully it's something that can remain consistent because the only thing it has to do to beat out the original, I feel the strongest thing many people would agree is be consistent and be coherent. That's all PLL fans want and give us a gripping mystery. But let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.